Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am so glad that you have come to see about me today. Now, I did recently, or should I say recently, I did a poll on my YouTube channel, and I was asking in this particular poll what kind of content uh, would you guys, ladies, um, like for me to discuss. And overwhelmingly, uh, you said dating. You want to know about dating. So, I mean, that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to I want to just deal with dating. And what I have for you today are seven principles or not principles, seven keys, seven things that you should be focusing on when dating for data. Now, you know, that's something that's big on my agenda when it comes down to teaching people about dating. You should date for data. You're not dating for uh, flirtation. You should not be dating for a sexual encounter. You should be, if you're wise, you should be dating for data. Anybody that really has a mind and a heart to uh, pursue a relationship that would make for a marriage must date for data. In other words, you should be trying to learn something about this person as opposed to just uh, throwing yourself out there and uh, doing what you see everybody else doing. You know, you, you're looking at everybody around you doing this. Everybody's just going out here, flaunting themselves, you know, dressing provocatively and and uh, having all of these sexual encounters. And just all you're doing is just increasing your body count. You're not making any inroads relative to developing a, a healthy, productive relationship because you have to you have to have the wisdom to understand that the purpose and the intent of dating is data. Now, it's unfortunate that even in the church, I hear people say religion is just, you know, sometimes religion is just so idiotic. You know, it's so ludicrous, some of the stuff that religious people can say. People say, well, you know, dating is not of God. Let me tell you something. There's nothing inherently uh, wrong or evil about dating. It's the concept that the individual or the individuals bring to the process of dating. The only way for you to really get to know a person, to figure out if this person is a good fit for your life, you know, in the church we, we, we use the text a lot, um, be not unequally yoked together. Well, how are you supposed to figure out if you're equally yoked or not? You have, to, you have to have some encounter with the person. You can't just say, okay, God sent this man to me. God sent this woman to me. And while we going to the altar, we're going to be married. That's crazy, man. You know how many people tell me God gave this person to me and, and they go to the altar and get married. And then six months later, you know, they discover something about the person that, well, you avoid that kind of thing when you really develop a proper mindset around the concept of dating. Dating is for data. You're supposed to figure out that this person is an ax murderer before you have sex with them, before you make babies with them, before you get married to them. You're supposed to be able to figure out there's something not, that's not so right about this individual. Well, you, you, you develop, you, you learn these things through the process of what? Dating. 
Dating is for data. So there's seven things that I want to highlight for you today. Now, just some introduction. This, this whole concept of dating for data, I call or refer to it as intentional dating. This is intentional dating because most of the people you know or will see in life are, they're kind of on that um, uh, instinct, you know, that, 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 that impulse thing, you know, that sexual impulse kind of dating, you know, because I see this person and they look appealing to me and I'm sexually attracted. Uh, I just kind of move into the relationship or the situationship instinctively. And, and because people are dating instinctively and not cerebrally, this is why we have so many failed relationships. This is why we invite people into our lives that we should have never even stopped to have the conversation with. It's because we are not employing anything cerebral. We're not employing any spiritual capacity. We're just moving off of, you know, that animalistic type thing, the same thing that brings a male beast to a female beast and, you know, whatever, is, is what we, we find ourselves doing in terms of dating. Now, there, there are, what I'm trying to get you to do is to take the process to the higher faculties of your soul and your spirit, rather than just, you know, moving off of instinct and, and that animalistic drive for mating, empl employ your soul, your mind, employ your spirit in the process. Because when you, when you employ the higher dimensions of your being, what happens is you begin to gather subsurface data, data. In other words, things that are beneath the surface and hidden and would not normally be revealed are now um, made open to you because you are taking your time to use your brain and to listen to your spirit. Now, before I move into my seven points, let me just... Let me just say this as well. Um, in the process of dating, you have to learn, you must learn to be honest in terms of your dating. And you must learn to always live in your truth. Because when, you, when you're honest and you live your truth, your authentic energy, your authentic self is revealed. And when you, when you are walking in your authenticity, you, you then have a, a much better uh, chance at attracting a person that would be suitable for you. But when you are living your life like most people do, especially in the dating arena, when you're living your life as a fraud, you know, you're acting like you're this, but you're really that. You're dressing like you're this, but you're really something else. You are, you are throwing off false, a false impression that will always attract um, an unsuitable return. You can't attract authentic and genuine when you're fake. And you're not being fake because you're just you know, a fake, you're being fake many times because you, um, you lack the confidence, because your self-esteem is not where it should be. And quite honestly, if this is where you are, and you say, okay, you're talking to me now, you know, I'm always acting and I'm always pretending to be something when I'm dating. You're never projecting your true self. So you will never, you will never, you always get back what you put out. If you put out false, you're going to get false. You will always attract a person that is not suitable for you. It's better for you to just be your authentic self and let the person or persons that are um, organically attracted to you find you. 
as opposed to trying to behave like you're this or that because you can only act for so long. If you have to act for a person to develop an interest, you're going to have to act for that person to maintain an interest. And the reality is no one can act 24 seven. At some point, the real you is going to come out. And if, if you should keep up this scam for any length of time, you will always be miserable because you're always what acting. That's just a side note for, you know, just something for you to consider. Okay, let's get into this. Seven things that, um, I don't know how to term this, seven, seven things you should be, you know, feeling for, searching for in terms of dating for data. Number one, it starts with friendly interrogation. You cannot date for data if you are not given to questioning. If you're just sitting there batting your eyes as a woman, you know, or flexing your, your, your chest like Terry Crews, you know, you know what I'm talking about, dudes with the muscles and stuff. You've got your chest moving around. If y'all sitting around doing all that, um, you, you're not learning much about this individual. Dating for data starts with friendly interrogation. And I say friendly because I want to make certain that you understand this is not a situation where you move into it with this hard, stern energy. You know what I mean? Like you, like you the FBI or something and, you know, got a bright light shining in people's face, banging on the table. I demand an answer. You going to jail for life or something like that. No, 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 no. You, 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 this friendly interrogation thing is something that is subtle, but it's intentional. You know what I mean? Because you don't know this person. You don't know this person. And, and, and. The mistakes you've made in the past were due to the fact that you got involved with a person physically that you had no real knowledge of. Correct? Oh, you, you didn't have knowledge of them. Don't tell me you had knowledge of them, because if you really knew them, you would not have gone as far in, into that relationship with them as you did. If you really took the time to know them, if you had interrogated them properly and had gotten the right information, there's no way in the world you would have had children for this person. There's no way in the world you would have married this person. Right. So how may we learn the heart of a person? Questions. Why? Questions lead to what? Answers. For for you to ask questions, it means that the other person has to answer and when the other person answers, the other person is doing what? They're talking. And the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does speak. When you hear a person speaking, you are getting what? An x-ray of that person's heart. You're getting a download of their soul. So friendly interrogation, friendly questioning, it becomes the foundation of any relationship. You know, questions. You can't even run a marriage if, 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 you're, not, if you're not given to questioning and, and if you're not given to answering questions. You, you know, if there's something that Lisa doesn't understand that I, that I may have did or something she may be misreading, how is she going to get clear? Unless she does what? Ask questions. She doesn't know what's in my heart until I open my mouth. Then she may begin to know it and she'll then even have to, do, to discern if what's coming out of my mouth is, is real or true or not. But the foundation of any relationship must start with getting to know each other through what? Questioning. This only happens. This only happens through friendly questioning. Because your energy, you know, your frequency is important. You know, the way you approach this thing is very, very important. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. Well, how are you going to know that we agree? How are you going to know if, if we agree? You're going to have to ask questions and the person is going to have to have to answer questions, you know, uh, what if you just, what if you're a person that just likes to make money and spend it and the person you're, you're dating 
you, that you're interested in, um, let's say they're very frugal and they like to budget every dime. Well, you think it's a good idea to figure that out after you all get married? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, you get the point. Now, a person that... Because I hear some of you saying, okay, well, you know, they never, they never answer my questions. They, 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 they skate all around. They, they tend to avoid my questions. Well, a person that can't answer questions is either witless, slow, or they are being deceptive. And in either case, you should probably make that your last date. If, you're, if, if I'm asking you questions and you have no answers for me, that's probably a great indication to me that, you know, as fine as you may be, you ain't for me. Because if you can't answer a question, you're either slow or you are intentionally being deceptive. And in either case, we can't deal. Now, uh, let's see something here. Also, a person that has no questions for you is probably not interested. You know, if, if, if the, the, the flow of the evening is going like, you know, you so fine. Oh, I've never I've never seen I've never met a woman as fine as you. And then you go to, you change the subject to church or, you know, career, business, profession or whatever. And then, you know, five minutes later, they go, oh, your eyes are just drawing me in. Your eyes are just drawing me in. And they don't have any questions for you. They're not interested but anything. They're not interested. They are only interested in at that point. They may be interested more than likely are interested in a booty call. They're not really interested in you because when a person is really interested in you, they will have questions for you. When, when a man is interested in you or a woman is interested in, in you, they can talk all night long asking you questions and sitting on, you know, every word you say, they, they just, they're interested in you. They want to know about your family. They want to know about your history. They want to know, you know, they want to know everything they can find out about you. But a person that has no questions for you, they're not interested. Listen to what Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 and 35 says, it says, oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. How do you know, learn what's in the heart of a person? They have to talk. How do you get them to talk? Questions, uh, teaching queenology questions, questions reveal motives. Queens ask questions that only kings can answer. So friendly interrogation, especially questions around um, things that are, are, are important to you, you know, boils, boils down to that. You know, if, if you're a deeply spiritual person, um, you should ask them questions that pertain to things that are spiritual, you know, and see, see, see what kind of answers they give you. You know, as opposed to just kind of shooting from the hip and hoping things work out, you need to know, you know, those those non-negotiables, those things that you're not willing to bend, you know, on. You're certainly not going to break for. Um, you need to ask questions around those issues because you're trying to learn what? The heart of this person. I know they're fine. I know, I know you've never seen nobody as fine as this, this brother. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, you know, you said about the last three. You, you got to look at more than the package now. You know, I've told you all about the, the box of garbage that was wrapped in the, the beautiful paper with the big, beautiful bow on it. You know, you can take a bag of priceless uh, diamonds worth $100 million and put them in a greasy paper bag and drop them on the floor in the mall, and unless the cleaning man come by, 
when you come back, they'll still be there. But you can take a, a box of garbage, wrap it up in beautiful paper tie bow on it, and put it on the side of the highway, and in uh, you know less than a minute, somebody gonna pull over, throw that box in their trunk, and speed off with it, thinking they got something because they focused on the wrapping. They've not checked out the content. When they get home and discover what the content is, they're going to be mad that they put that stuff in their car. So it was garbage in there, you see? So friendly questions, friendly interrogation helps you to get to the content. Get cuts through all of the ribbons and the wrappings. And it gets you straight to the content. Now, number two, feel for that positive intuition you know just you just know something in your spirit you know what i mean like you just you know church folk we say i feel it in my spirit feel it in my spirit and what we're talking about at that point is uh discernment you know i'm discerning this thing i'm this 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 feels good you know this feels like mr right or mrs right positive intuition Never ignore a person's energy. A person will always make you feel a certain way. Never ignore that. You know what I mean? If a person makes you feel uneasy, it doesn't matter that they look so great on paper. You know, they make the right money. They're the right size. They're the right whatever, whatever, whatever. They're extremely articulate, but... There's something about them that just does not sit well with your internals. And there's something on the inside of you saying, no, time out, stop, run, Forrest, run. There has to be, you're feeling for this positive intuition. If you feel that negative stuff coming, you, you know, you need to be polite the rest of the evening and just kind of bow out. This is the kind of stuff that you're date, dating for data. As you engage a person up close and personal, pay very close attention to the way your spirit feels with them. And this is important because a person can lie to your mind. A person can act to deceive your emotions. A person can project themselves in a certain way to stimulate your body, fool all of those dimensions of you. But your spirit will always tell you the truth. Your spirit, when your body's, you know, carried away because they look so good, your eyes looking and, you know, your body and your emotions carried away and your mind is deceived by all of the, you know, the pros and you, you know. Your spirit is always on the scene telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But few of us actually um, consult our spirit when we're in a process, in a dating process. You're, you're more focused on your emotions, your feelings, your physicality. And that sexual drive you're feeling, to be quite honest with you. And that's the thing that keeps getting you um, caught up in situations that you should have never been in. That's what you all start talking about, my type, but it's not my type. When you say that, you're really talking about somebody that turns you on sexually. And all, all of the failed relationships you've had in the past were people that pretty much turn you on sexually and other, beyond that didn't do anything for you. So at some point, you got to grow up. And you got to stop, you know, making these life altering moves based on hormones, emotions, physicality. And you you got to dive deeper. You got to go into your spirit and you got to you got to you, you got to consult with your spirit and say, now, nah, you know, how does this feel? And then be honest with yourself relative to what your spirit is saying to you. Don't have your spirit say this ain't right. And then you, you ignore that and then create, you know, your own. You know what I'm talking about. Listen to what first John two and 20 says. And this is in the amplified. It says, but you have an you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by 
the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our minds and guards us from error. You really can't go wrong without the Holy Spirit tugging at your soul and your spirit saying, don't do this. But you, when you think you, you know, when you're struggling with broken consciousness and you think that you've hit the wall, you run over the cliff, you, you know, you over the hill and all of this kind of thing. You become so desperate that you turn down the, vo the voice of the Holy Spirit and you shut off the power to your brain and you're moving strictly off of emotion at this point. But you have an anointing to know all things. The Holy Spirit will speak speak to you, call it positive intuition or discernment. Now, let me just give you this real quickly. When you start talking about, um, you know, feeling for that positive intuition, a man generally should be feeling for this when it comes down to dating a woman. You should feel for a woman that brings about a calm to your world, a woman that is very calm and creates a calm environment around you, a woman that brings peace to you. You know what I mean? And, and you're, you're feeling for a girl that makes you feel good about yourself. She's going to build you up. Why are these things important for a man to maintain uh, a lifelong commitment with a woman? She has to be his place of peace and rest. And she, she also has to be the source of, of um, his not self-esteem, but pouring in men have the need to have our egos at least addressed. You know what I mean? We're not a healthy man is not an egomaniac, but every man needs to know that he's doing good. And he has to have a woman that becomes his personal cheerleader that can say, you're a great guy. You know what I mean? Not every day, you know, but every now and then, you know, we're you know, I appreciate what you do. You're a great guy. I, I love you, you know. So you're feeling for the kind of woman that can give you that because that's going to be the kind of energy that you're going to be able to commit to as a man and actually, you know, if you're healthy, be able to maintain that commitment without a lot of strain. Now, for a woman, what is a woman feeling for in terms of that positive intuition? She's searching for a man that makes her makes her feel safe. You know, she feels safe with him. In other words, he has a temperament that he's not threatening. Um, he doesn't feel dangerous, but then he feels strong enough. She feels enough strength coming from him that she feels safe relative to surrounding dangers, that if something were to happen, that this is a man that would protect me. And and also, um, the as a woman, you should be feeling for, you know, does this guy make me feel valued? You know, this is why I don't believe that women should be trying to talk about 50 50 on a on a date. You know, I think a man, I think a man, I think a, I think a real man finds um, great pride in taking care of his woman financially, even if she can afford it. And I think when a woman practices this, you know, whatever this is y'all got going on now, uh, I think you rob the brother of his, you know, his opportunity to, to be the man. And you're not realizing that you're really walking in masculine energy when you start talking about, let me pay half. Let me, I, 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 I covers my weight. I cover, no, no, sit down, honey, please sit down. Let me take care of this. You know, back to my point. So I think that's some of the things that you, you, you should be feeling for relative to this positive intuition. Now, um, number three, which is a big one, number three, which is a big one, um, dating for data. You, you should be, you should be, you know, searching to see if there is comparable intelligence. You do not want to be in a situation where you're functioning, you know, in terms of intelligence, 
at a nine and this person is stuck on a three. And when I say intelligence, please, please understand that I'm not talking about education because I think that the two are mutually ex exclusive, to be quite honest with you. Um, there are a lot of people that I know that have attained massive educational goals who are not the most intelligent people. And there are people who have not really gone, gone far in terms of education, but are some of the most intelligent people, some of the most intelligent people in the world. So when I, when I say comparable intelligence, I'm speaking of a person that connects with you on the soulish level. In other words, when you start a conversation, their input, their insight, or their questions surrounding your subject or your topic um, just captivates you. You know, it turns into hours of dialogue, hours of conversation. You can't have that with a person that's not intellectually comparable. And, and see, this comparable intelligence piece is going to prove to be more important to you as you get older. You know what I mean? Because as you get older, you know, it's not going to be... It's not going to be as much about sex and all of that as much as it's going to be about companionship. Well, your companionship is limited if you're dealing with a person that does not have a comparable intelligence. And see, that's something you have to search for on purpose. You know, see, usually we don't realize that we've connected ourselves to somebody that's um, intellectually inferior until life gets real. As long as we just around here dating and wearing, you know, pretty clothes and going out dancing and eating and, and, and having sex and all that kind of thing, we don't pay attention to it. But once you have a child and now this person is either your, your baby's daddy or your, your baby's mama and life is serious and once you start getting bills and problems start hitting and you start trying to talk to this person and you can't connect, you know, once, once you start getting serious about your vision, you know, your dreams, your goals, your business, your career, and you asking them questions because you want, you want to bounce stuff off on them and they have nothing for you. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 10, it says, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Don't try to mix these two beasts together. Their temperaments are different. They got two different brains, two different operations going on. You cannot get anything accomplished with them together. This text actually refers to having a harmonious mental rhythm that allows two beasts to progress together. An ox and an ass will never have a harmonious mental rhythm. You're trying, <laughs> you're trying to plow, trying to get something accomplished. I almost said it because it's in the Bible right there, but I ain't going to say it because y'all going to judge me because I'm a preacher, but it's right there in the Bible. The Bible says, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass. You're trying to plow with one, you see, and, and you should have figured this out sooner than later. You, you don't waste all of that time with a person that's and it doesn't make them a bad person. It just means that y'all not a good fit. You know what I'm saying? If, if you look in uh, Proverbs 27 and 17, it says iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. What is the point there? A relationship is designed for one to sharpen the other. You know, a, a woman ought to make a man better and a man ought to be able to make a woman better, but they got to be on the same page. They got to be comparable. 
Iron sharpens iron. There's a reason wood can't sharpen iron. The two don't go together. Iron is going to destroy the wood. And the wood is going to do nothing to improve the iron. You see? So you have to, while you're dating, you're feeling for, you know, all of this questioning and everything. All of that plays into feeling them out relative to uh, their being uh, or having comparable intelligence, you know? Can they, can they have the conversation with you? Can they stimulate you? You know what I mean? Can they make love to your mind? You know, talking about making love to the body. Try making love to the mind. You, you need somebody that can make love to your mind. I'm not talking about talking a whole lot of nasty talking, all that. I'm talking about somebody that can really have a conversation with you that makes you go home and think about four or five things that they said. That you're so excited about the conversation. You're looking forward to going back, going out again with this person just because of the stimulating conversation. Do you have that in them? Now, um, number four. Number four. Let's see something here. You're searching for, when you, while you're dating for data, you are searching for mutual interest. You're searching for mutual interest. Now, when I say mutual interest, of course, I'm talking about, you know, y'all may find some things in common. You, we both like to dance. We like sports. You know, we, we're, we're both into the church or we're both into exercise. All of those things are great. You know what I mean? But you know, let's just cut straight to the chase. You, you, need to, you need to discern if this person is as interested in you as you think you're interested in them. Never invest yourself into anybody who is not as interested in you as you are in them. Never, you see. Now, this, this um, really plays heavily into a woman's process. You know what I mean? As a woman, you should never put yourself in a position where you're out here throwing yourself on the sword. You know, I think I love you. This dude has never even told you he likes you. And you out here talking about, I think I love you. Should never do it. We talked in one of our uh, most recent, more recent discussions about um, how a woman is not really built emotionally for rejection. A man can be rejected over and over and over again. He'll keep coming, you know, maybe not necessarily to the same woman, sometimes to the same woman, but he'll move on. Whereas a woman is rejected. And it leaves an emotional, it leaves a wound and a scar. She may try to act like she's toughing it out and she good and all that, but the reality is her heart is broken. So it is never advisable for a woman to articulate interest before a man does. You know, like on the first date, you're not supposed to be the one at the end of the date, I don't care how great it was, saying, you know, am I going to see you again? Uh-uh, you're not supposed to do that. What you're supposed to do is, is lay back in the cut and let homeboy say, you know, can we do this again? Can I holler at you one more time? Are we good? You know, and then you say, you, you want to see me again? Then let him say, yeah, yeah, I do. And then you can say, I'd like to see you again, too. You're a nice guy, you see. And, and you, you always let him lead. You know, a woman is never supposed to move faster than a man. If a man slows down to a snail's pace, a woman is supposed to slow down to a rock's pace. You're never supposed to throw yourself out there in front of a man. Let a man, a man that is worthy of you will lead, he will lead, he will lead. And once, once it's affirmed that, you know, this brother loves you and he's dedicated to you, you know, now you can let your hair down and you can, you know, you can, you can be free. But until then, you, you gotta, you gotta let, you gotta let them, you gotta let the man, you know, 
articulate interest. Now, I'm not saying that you're not supposed to show interest in him because you do. Brothers need need that affirmation as well. You know what I mean? But a, a real man is 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 respecting the fact that you let him articulate it. And then you came back with exactly what he needed to hear from you. And that is, I like you, too. You see, uh, you know, don't, don't don't play that, you know, that, that tough girl stuff. And, you know, but let him let him mutual mutual interest. But discern if he has the same kind of interest in you that you have in him or the same that she has the same kind of interest in you that you have in her. You know, of course, that means if you're a man. Uh, number five, we're dating for data, personal inspiration, personal inspiration. Does this person inspire me personally? Am I inspired to be the best version of myself? Because of this person, we've seen one another two or three times. Am I inspired or am I just infatuated? Is this person just so fine? I just don't want to stop looking at them. But or is this person really inspiring me personally? They have to be able to make you desire to be your best. You see, when a good man gets the right woman, she will inspire him to be a great man. See, now he has to be like, um, you know, the, the little box that has all of the pieces in it. Ain't nothing missing. Everything's there. But just need somebody to know how to take those pieces and put them in the right place. Well, the right woman in a, in a good man's life can help him put those pieces in the right place and turn him into a great man. Because she brings about a personal inspiration. You know, the right man in a woman's life can bring about healing of all of those wounds and all of those hurts and take a woman that, <clears throat> excuse me, was a wallflower and turn her into a bright star. Because they bring, you know, you, you, you're feeling for the person that inspires you personally, the person that makes you want to give your best effort, makes you want to be your best version. You are personally inspired by this person. And you, you'll be able to begin to feel that from the very first date. In the Bible, there's a biblical principle in Hebrews 10, 24, which says, and let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good, good deeds. You ought to surround yourself with with people from friends to family to uh, romantic interests with people that encourage you to do good works, people that inspire you to be your best version. If you're with a person, you're dating a person and you're not inspired. Wow. Well, you know, all of us need that. You, you know, all of us need inspiration. And here's the sad thing. You try to develop a lifelong or a long term relationship with this person and they're incapable of fueling your um, need to be inspired by another person. So now what are you left to? You're left to you know, searching for that source elsewhere. And, and the, the tricky thing about that is the person that inspires you, um, you know, holds a very special place in your heart. You want that person that holds that special place in your heart to be your, you know, your numero uno, your wifey, your husband. You, you don't want to, you, you know, so you're feeling for this, you're feeling for this in the dating process. Now, here's number six. Let me get out of your hair. <sighs> Dating for data. You got, they got to come back. If you're going to continue this, they got to come back with a clean inspection. And I know you're saying, what do you mean by a clean inspection? This is what I mean. I mean, there are too many of you that wait until after you develop a serious relationship with this person. It's sexual. 
and all this kind of stuff. You got somebody living in your house and this or you, or even you you're married to them. And now you think they're cheating on you or something like that. And now all of a sudden you become in a you, you become a private detective. After the fact. Why didn't you? Why weren't you a private detective before you let this person all up into your life like this? Why? Why? Why were you not a private detective? You know, the second week y'all started dating, as opposed to waiting five years. And now you. Now all of a sudden you want to be a private detective. Any wise person that feels like I'm getting ready to invest my heart. In this situation, any wise person that has done his or her due diligence checks these people out. You don't believe people for what they say? No, 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 no. And then I don't know how y'all out here just having all of this sex with these people. You don't know what these people got. You don't know where they've been. You know, I... Uh, mm. If if uh, God forbid anything happened with my wife, I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? There's no way in the world I could have a sexual relationship with a person, with a woman. Be specific about that. Uh, other than my wife, if if something happened to my wife, until I saw, I got to see the doctor's signature. You got to come with a note from your doctor. I'm gonna come with a note from mine. And you got to come with a note from yours. We, we, we ain't getting married until I, I got to see this note from your doctor. Inspection, man. You got, they got to come back with a clean inspection. You're supposed to Google this king. You are supposed to check this person out. Go and go and jump on there. Go through there. Like you check out stuff when you think you, your, your people cheating on you. Well, before you even get to that level, go and look all through the look at their social media stuff. They do it on the jobs. Even the jobs, they take they take and check people's social media to verify that they are what they're projecting to be. Why? Why are you dating somebody and you haven't checked all of this stuff out? Clean inspection. Take no one at face value. Comb through everything you got to comb through. Do your research and verify Trust, but verify. First Corinthians four, two and three. Moreover, it is required in stewards. Here's a principle that a man be found faithful. Meaning what man be found. Somebody's going to inspect his life. We're not going to just take him, take his word. We're not going to take him at face value. His life must be inspected. And he must be found faithful. You got to you got to come back with findings. Not with hopes and wishes. All right, let me shut this down. Number seven. Number seven. We're dating for data, right? Number seven. You want, you know, after that third date, they keep asking you out. You want to be able to hear, see, know their clear intentions. You do not want to be the person, the woman especially, that's out here dating somebody, you know, for years and no clear intentions. Moving forward in the relationship, they should be clear and direct about wanting to see you again. And then they should be clear and direct about having serious interest. They should be clear and direct about exclusivity. Never up in the air. You've been dating this person for, for over a month and you don't have any indication as it relates to where we're going with this. Uh, 
Is it clear that we're just friends and we just go out? If that's what it is, there's nothing wrong with that. But are the intentions clear? Don't assume anything. Don't assume anything. See, that's how you get tricked up and you get, find yourself falling into bed with all these people. You're assuming stuff. You're assuming that because somebody is sexually turned on by you, that that means they're interested in you and, or they're interested in a relationship. They're interested in relations, not necessarily a relationship. But see, when, you don't, when, you, when, you're not, when you're not fishing for clear intentions, you find yourself falling into these traps with all of these assumptions and people will keep the thing, keep the waters murky and keep things real cloudy to keep you confused. But it's your responsibility to make certain that you know their clear intentions. And if, if they can't communicate clear intentions, you should have what? A clear path out the door going on down the road about your business. Matthew 5 and 37 says, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. In other words, let your yes be yes. If you mean yes, say yes. If it's no, say no. We all grown enough to accept yes or no. But when you, when you got people that, that keeps, you know, keep stuff up in the air, it, you know, it, it's, it's always a red flag when a person leaves you increasingly confused about their intentions. You know, it constantly picking you up. They're constantly bringing you out. Especially when it turns sexual. Y'all just having all of this illegal sex. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know, you don't have the first clue about what their intentions are. Red flag, man. They, they, they See, the, the thing you have to understand is that they could be setting you up for um, a lot of gaslighting, where they make you feel crazy. You know, he, he didn't, didn't got six months worth of sex, food and clothes clean and all of that. And now here you are talking about where we going with this. What you mean where we going with this? You know, you know what we got. You know what we got. You, you don't play crazy. You know what we got. You know how I feel about you. Well, how do you feel about me? You already know. You mean to tell me you, you gonna act like you don't know? Don't play no games with me now. Well, what's going on? You're being gaslighted. You're being gaslighted. They never intended on making anything clear. You never had a process that demanded clarity. And so you got all caught up in the web with all of these false subliminal messages that moved you emotionally and got you to a sexual place. And now you've given up everything. You've given up all of this here and no clear intentions. And when you get brave enough to start asking about clear intentions, they make you feel crazy, like something's wrong with you and that, you know, is you. And then once that starts, then then what they'll do is they'll ghost you. You know, they'll they'll just fall off the scene you won't hear from them. They won't let you contact them because there were never any clear intentions. They just came in and, you know, plundered and did everything else. They, they took everything they could take and uh, made you feel crazy. Or have you apologizing for <laughs> something you didn't even do? And now they, they pull off from you and they go and they and they go shit. They just leave you hanging. And then periodically they'll come back and they'll they'll. Um, uh, they'll hoover, just, just, you know, I call it doing the monkey bar, swinging in and out of your life, swinging in and out of your life. And all of this is going on because you didn't do what? In the process of dating, you did not, you did not hold their feet to the fire relative to what were their clear intentions. You don't, if you don't know nothing else, you won't know what their intentions are. And you want those intentions stated and communicated in no uncertain terms. Are we friends? Are we just friends? You know what I mean? Um, everybody doesn't subscribe to the Christian ethic. You know what I mean? As I do, everybody, you know, doesn't subscribe to that. So some of y'all believe in sexual relationships, 
you know, before marriage, outside of marriage. Doesn't even necessarily have to, marriage doesn't even have to be on the table for some. But if that's where both of y'all are, at least let everything be clear. Let, let's, let's be in sin together on the same. <laughs> let's make up our minds together that we're going to live in sin together. And we're both clear on this. All we about is we're going to have sex and have fun and do what we do. But clear intentions. So this is some of the stuff that you have to begin to um, unpack in the process of dating. Just some of the stuff, man. I'm sure I could come up with, a, you know, a lot more. But these are some things for you to begin to think about. Now, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this time that I've had with your children. Now, God, I pray that something I've said has landed like wisdom on their hearts, shifted them, God, into a better place. And now, Father, my prayer is that you will allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to pour in the oil of emotional healing. There's some, dear God, that cried through this whole thing because they've been broken so badly by people that never deserved them. Father, I thank you for healing every broken heart. I thank you for enlightening every mind. And God, I thank you now for making them know that their future is amazing. In Jesus' name, I give you praise and glory for it. Amen, amen, amen. Now listen, Lisa and I love you all. Thank you so much for sowing into uh, our lives like you do on a daily basis. We just love you so much. But I want you to go to my website at www.rcblakes.com. Sign up for my mailing list. Check out all of my um, online programs. Find one that may speak to your particular situation. It'll bless you. I took a lot of time, made a lot of uh, investment into those programs that they might bless people all around the world, even while I'm sleeping. Go and check them out. And um, those of you that may need counseling, we have a relationship with a counseling agency online counseling agency known as BetterHelp Counseling. There's a link in our description that if you use it, it will afford you 10% off of the cost of counseling. And they in turn for the referral, did I say that right? Referral, <laughs> they will uh, deposit, they will sow into back into R.C. Blake's ministries. So it's a win-win. Just know that Lisa and I love you. We thank God for you. We really, 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 really do. And I look forward to meeting many of you all around the world as the world begins to open up again. I look forward to meeting you from all around the world. Now, I want you to remember this. I say this to our church family uh, in New Home Ministries. You are on top and going higher. God has even more in store for you. You're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So since you're on top and you're going higher, I will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.